So in the first video, we talked about how important the UiPath Advanced Certification is. In this one, we are going to talk about the best way that helped me prepare for the certification and get a good score in the exam. So instead of going and trying to memorize everything, I tried to work on the practice exam the most I can. And this practice exam actually made me go and see the topics that are important to UiPath. Because today, there are a lot of new things that has been introduced to UiPath that are not necessarily going to be in the exam questions. This is why we will start from the practice test and then we are going to try and go back to the topics and actually explain them. And this is exactly what we're going to do today. So let's jump to my screen. Okay, so here we have the website that I have shared with you in the previous video. By the way, if you haven't watched it, just go back and watch it. It's really important to understand everything that we're going to do today. So go back and watch this video here. And uh, after that, you can just uh, come back and watch the rest of this video where we're going to be answering the first question. So here, we're going to go to UiPath Certified Advanced RPA Developer and we're going to click on Practice Test. After that, we are going to give our information. So just choose customer here and choose your country here. Then log in. After that, it will give you this uh, information. You can just read it. But the most important part is that the products covered and the practice test include the 2021.10 versions of Studio, Robot, and Orchestrator. So the features that has been introduced after 2021.10 are not actually covered inside of it. This is why sometimes it's better to go to the practice test instead of going back to UiPath because you can be uh, preparing for things that are not even going to be in the exam. Okay, so let's click on start answering questions. And here we are going to have our first question that we are going to be answering. So instead of going through it uh, today, everything, instead of doing like a, a mock test, I actually took screenshots of all of these questions and I have them here. So all of these questions, I already took screenshots of them. I created a robot for it. And now I have them uh, divided by topics. So topic one, topic two, three, four, and five until eight. For example, topic three is all about robotic enterprise framework. And it's where we are going to talk solely about robotic enterprise framework. The other topics are different topics that we have seen in the previous video. But the most important thing is that we have these topics and they are divided and every question is inside uh, the correspondent topic. So to be able to uh, follow through with me, I actually created a Discord server. And in this Discord server, if you join it and go to certifications, UiPath advanced certification, you are going to find the topics in here in a zip file. So you're gonna have all of the questions and you can follow through with me. I'm going to have the invite link to this Discord in the description below. And the best thing about it is that you can actually ask me questions with screenshots and files and everything. So it's better in terms of interactiveness. You can actually talk to me. I always try to be here at least for like 30 minutes a day after my full time job, but it's a better way to interact with me. Otherwise, you can just comment under the video if you have any questions. And one last information before starting to answer this first question. Uh, I will be sharing either one to three questions per video, depending on the complexity of the question. So if you have any clarification that you want about that specific question, you can just always ask me inside the dedicated uh, Discord channel or in the comments below. Otherwise, just keep a comment, whatever you want to say uh, about uh, this, uh, this series. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first question, which is going to be, a developer designed a process in UiPath Studio that is best suited for a simple and linear process. Which Studio workflow type was used? Is it a global exception handler, a state machine, a flowchart, or a sequence? So here we're gonna go through uh, every uh, type of these uh, workflows and we're gonna see which one of them is more suitable for a simple and linear process. Okay, so let's go to my edge and we will start the definitions. I am in uh, UiPath Docs. If you go to this website, I will leave you the links in the description below. 
If you go to this website, you can just search for flowchart and it will give you the page for the flowchart. So here, uh, the flowchart is a type of project that consists of various activities which can be connected to one another in multiple ways, enabling you to automate simple actions and create complex business processes as well. So it's not only for simple actions, but also for creating complex business processes. It yields diagrams that help you easily view and follow your process. Flowcharts can be either used as a standalone automation project or included in procedures of greater amplitude. So here we don't have an example of what a flowchart looks like, but uh, I already created one. This is a simple flowchart that uh, counts to five. And in this uh, flowchart, we can see that uh, the, 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 the different activities are actually interconnected by these arrows and we can actually go back. So the fact that we can go back and we have this, uh, this type of diagram we can actually create complex project inside of it. So it's not only for simple projects, it's also for complex processes. So it's the wrong answer. So as far as now, flowcharts is the wrong answer. Let's go now to state machine. So what is a state machine? It's a very short definition, but it's actually, uh, uh, I'm not going to say quite complex, but it's the most complex uh, between all of them. So try to concentrate with the, the definition. It's a container for using state machine specific activities. Contains a start node, that's important, that can be linked to the initial state of the state machine. You can find out more about it in these documentations, but we don't also have an example of it here. So let's go to activities state. And here we have an example. So as you can see, this uh, example, we have a state machine in here and we have a starting node. And then this is a simple uh, classical use case where uh, the process or the robot chooses a random number. And then uh, after that, we will try to guess that number. So if the number is small, it will go uh, back to guess number. And it tells us that the number is smaller. Can you guess a higher number? If the number is bigger, it will go back to guess number always and tell us that the number is actually uh, bigger. So uh, choose a, a, a lower number. So after uh, we guess the right number, it will just go from this state, guess number, to the final state, which is the uh, end of this uh, state machine uh, workflow. So this is just a simple example. Don't give so much attention to it. What's more important is that a state machine is a container where we have stable states that we have to navigate through in order for us to have a certain logic in our process. So as you can see, it's not only for uh, simple linear processes, so it's also not the right answer. So state machine is also not the right answer. Global exception handler is not even. It's not even a, a, a workflow type. It's, it's actually a sequence, which we're going to see now. But the global exception handler is not even a workflow type. It's just a sequence that have some specific properties, but don't put so much attention to it because it's not important. I was not asked about the global exception handler. So now let's go to the sequence, which is actually the right answer, as you guessed, and see what's the definition of sequence. So sequences are the smallest type of projects. They are suitable to linear processes that are enable you to go from one activity to another. So let's create a, a new sequence. So let's put uh, different actions inside of it. So as you can see, we have an action that goes to another action that goes to another action. We can't actually control these arrows and they go from one activity to another. So if we go back to main, and here, as you can see, uh, if I take this arrow, I can just basically link it to this activity so I can control the arrows. In sequence, it's not the case. It just goes uh, activity by activity. So it's not, uh, it's not uh, for complex projects. It's for simple linear processes. So if we go back to the uh, question, the right answer in this case is going to be sequence. And that's the right answer in this, uh, for this question. Okay. 
So uh, now that we are done with this question, it's going to prepare us for the next question, which is uh, going to ask us specifically about state machines. Now, uh, as an RPA developer, we don't create a lot of processes where we need to uh, work with state machines. So I understand if you don't see the answer for these questions right away, even though that you are an experienced RPA developer, because we don't use them that much. And even when you use them, they are usually in the robotic enterprise framework and we don't get to see uh, what's the inside of a state activity is like. So here we have already defined the state machine activity. And now we have to define what a state is, what the state activity is, because they are different. So let's go back to uh, UiPath Studio and let's create a new state machine workflow. So under new, a state machine. So let's create the state machine. And as you can see now, I created a state machine workflow. And in here, I can put a state activity and I can put it directly here to link it to the uh, starting node. I will put another state activity because I need it for the demonstration. I can put it here always. And I will link this state activity back to this to get rid of this uh, error in here. Good. So we already defined the state machine. And as you can see here, I have the state activity. So let's go back to the question and actually read it. A developer decided to create a process using a state machine. What is the correct execution sequence of the parts in the state activity? So from the drop down list, we are going to choose the correct order for each sequence or for each uh, part of the state activity. So this is a drop down from one to four and we have to basically order them. So let's start uh, by just trying to answer it ourselves without seeing the answer. And let's see how uh, that will go. So the first thing that we see is the entry. Uh, I mean, just by uh, common sense, entry should be number one because this is when we enter the activity. Then what are we gonna do? Is it gonna be the exit, the destination or the transition? We can't say for sure. We can see that it say that exit, for example, is gonna be number four, but this intuition is wrong because the exit is actually number two. So as you can see, if you're trying to use intuition and you don't know the answer, this will actually get you in trouble. This is why you actually have to remember this kind of stuff. So let's go back to UiPath and look inside of our state activity. So here we have the entry, we have the exit, and we have the transition, and then we have the destination. So the exit is actually number two, the transition is number three, and then the destination is number four. So we're gonna start by the entry. This is where we're gonna have our activities. We can also have other activities while we're exiting the state machine. And then we are going to have all our transitions because we can have multiple transitions. So let's go here and for example, let's do this. Let's link another one. And as you can see here, I have multiple transitions. So we can have multiple transitions. And yeah, that's basically it. So let's go back to the question and answer it. So here, for example, in the entry, we will choose one. I have a screenshot, so I don't actually have the, the exam. But if you are in the exam, choose number one in entry, choose number two in exit, choose uh, number three in transition, and number four should be the, the destination. So that's basically it. That's the right answer for this question. So in the next video, we are going to see uh, the rest uh, of the questions in this topic, which are going to be this question and this question. So tune in for that. And yeah, catch you guys on the next one. Peace.